Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. The Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, has set a date, which is December 1, 2024, um, as a deadline for states to implement the new 70,000 Naira minimum wage, threatening an indefinite strike in non-compliant states. The NLC condemned fuel marketers for inflating petrol prices, claiming citizens face unnecessary economic hardship due to the exploitative pricing. The NLC announced plans for a national minimum wage implementation committee to mobilize and educate citizens on their rights. The NLC also demanded an urgent review of government policies impacting citizens and called for public refineries, or rather called for public refineries in Port Harcourt, Wari, and Kaduna to be reopened. Opened. Now joining us is Ola Dakpo S. Moses, is a former national president, um, P. Texan. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Uh, thank you for having me. And good morning to Nigerians. As well. good, good morning. morning. So um, we have about 36 states in Nigeria, as well as the federal capital ter territory. And just about 20 of them have implemented this new minimum wage, which is um, at 70,000 Naira. So there's still about 16 or 17 more that it hasn't yet. Um, what do you think are some challenges that you, they might be facing? The reason why they've not implemented this, because, of course, this uh, has been signed into law, whereby um, everyone needs to be paid at least 70,000 Naira every single month, which is not even enough when you think of the hardship that people are facing, especially with fuel pricing, electricity tariff, and, you know, just inflation in general. But yes, there are still some states who are not paying this. Why do you think this is happening? And what are the challenges they might be facing? We know that, um, you know, some of them are owing debts, which has risen to about 11 trillion. But what are some challenges you would want to highlight this morning? Uh, well, uh, thank you again for having me. Uh, I believe that uh, presently at what we have at the moment, no state in Nigeria should have an excuse mm. or any challenge not to pay the minimum wage. Uh, anytime wages are being increased in Nigeria, uh, the government goes beyond our back to ensure that the will to pay is also added to those minimum wages. For example, look at the first subsidy removal. One of the reasons the government gave is the ability to implement minimum wage and to take off some wastage of governance, like the subsidy funds. So now, uh, from the uh, beginning of the term of this present administration, you will recall that states that have been getting a particular amount of money as their, uh, as their, uh, as their share from the federation account has doubled, tripled, or even some to almost raise to, or, or almost times 10. So presently, uh, on behalf of the state, I believe it's just part of, it's just sheer wickedness and, uh, yeah, wickedness, pure wickedness, mm -hmm. uh, make them not to implement the, the minimum wage. Even those that have announced implementation, it will interest you to know that many of them have just done that on paper, except one or two few of them. So there is no excuse, there is no reason why they are handicapped or they cannot implement just pure wickedness. <laughs> but I don't know. We just had uh, a report here that some of the states, they, the FAC allocation that they have is not even enough to finance uh, the governor's office alone. So whatever they need to do is to get a little bit from their IGR and then borrow from outside. So you're now disputing that and saying that uh, it is enough to cover all the expenses if they decide to switch to the new minimum wage and pay. Yeah, it's, it's just, uh, like, like I said it earlier, it's laziness. Uh, a report uh, was released by, I think, uh, Stati Sense recently on, uh, on, on uh, news media, on social media, okay. which shows that some of these state governments that are saying that actually had more budget for running their state uh, office than even their works allocation. You know, when, when, you, when you are saying uh, uh, the, the increase is not enough to run your state office, what is the percentage of your state office compared to the percentage of the workers and then the percentage of the people in the state that you govern so to, like i said earlier it's, it's just pure wickedness nothing can ever be enough for women because every day i want to keep increasing every day the governor wants to import the, uh, the the furniture from italy the furniture from rome from a lot of countries against you know so if the governor is telling us that it's not enough to run his office then he doesn't have any business being a governor in the first place 
Mm. So now the NLC obviously is threatening with um, a strike action f come December 1. Um, would you say this is the right way to go? Because like you rightly said, there's money. And of course, the state governors need to pay that 70,000 naira. There is no excuse whatsoever why they cannot pay that money. With the fact that the NLC is threatening the strike action, is that the best way um, right now to go about it? Is that what can definitely, um, you know, just twist the arms of the state governors and say, of course, because we know that we do not want to be losing um, money, maybe our IGR, when these people are not working, then we have no choice but to pay them. Well, uh, I would say the NLC is not twisting the arms of any state governor, government. Because if you look at uh, the deadline for this employer of this minimum wage, it started sometimes last year, in, uh, agreed, uh, I think, early in uh, this year. Mm -hmm. And this is November. And it will interest you that uh, the NLC coming out from his organs meeting, the neck meeting, and issuing a December 1st uh, implementation. Uh, action, December 1st action, is enough time for these wow. state governors to actually do what it is expected of them. So it is not arms twisting, and this is the right, uh, is a step in the right direction. And I want to pray that NLC will also not go, uh, give back, go back uh, on this request. And uh, all Nigerians, I also want to so, uh, indulge also, give the NLC a wide support on this action. It is not any arms twisting. It is the right step in the right direction. If the governor is telling us that even after November they are just setting up committee about like uh Oshun, Oshun is, is still trying to tell us that I want to set committee, Enugu is setting committee, Imo is setting committee, Benue committee, Bornu committee, uh Crossiva mm -hmm. has set up committee, but after the, the announcement of the NSC action, they already announced seventy thousand. Castina, uh, they are committed to pay, but we don't know when they want to pay. Jigawa is not even talking about anything now. Uh, Nasarawa says they are ready, but what they are, what are they ready to do? We don't know. <laughs> or should unknown? Or you are still still having committee in place? Play two committee. Shokoto Taraba, no information at all. Yobe, nothing. Zamfara just started paying thirty thousand. So the December first, it should be a total action. We are every Nigerian should support NLC because if the government had allowed the regulation to uh, increase fuel price more than three times. Mm. From 200 to over a thousand naira, and now you are still setting up committee. No, 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 no not at all. Nobody's interested in the government. Yeah, but how do we reconcile the, this with uh, uh, what some people are advocating that uh, every state government should be left to decide on their own uh, the issue of minimum wage? Uh, if at the center it has been accepted that 70,000 will be the minimum wage, and some states have not done anything about it, maybe because their claim is that they cannot pay 70,000 minimum wage. Uh, what do you think uh, should be done at this point? Do you also buy the idea that it should be decentralized where every state decides? Or do you think because of what is happening right now, it has to be the center that will decide for the states? Well, uh, coming from that angle just means we want to allow some uh, governors to further impoverish their citizens. Because the truth of the matter is this, if uh, the fact is being shared from the center, the uh, subsidy uh, surplus, I would say subsidy surplus, because it has been removed, the amount of money was being used for subsidy has, has gone off totally. And that is also being done at the center. I see no argument for why states should be allowed to pay whatever they want to pay without a, a, a centralized minimum wage. 70,000 is just a minimum wage. If that is a central minimum wage, fine, are free to go and discuss with the NLC in their state, the, the worker in their state, the TUC, and the other various organs, how much they really want to pay. So uh, uh, leaving, them, uh, leaving them at will to make that decision on their own without a centralized minimum is going to impoverish a lot of states. Some states will even let you know that they cannot even pay 15,000 as minimum wage, but they go to Abuja every month to take mm -hmm. a fact from the center. So I think any state that truly cannot meet up should quickly apply to be merged to other states at this time. Yes, I think we should allow that the, the Senate, the legislative branch, should pass that. That if your state cannot cope, the governor should try to resign. And if, if the entire state believes that they cannot cope with this, they just merge with another state so that there's no need to keep giving them fact. 
there's no need to give, keep giving them other benefit that other things that could do are, are, are benefiting. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like you said, some of them, they probably cannot pay merge. But what are some other policies or reforms that you think they can adopt right now, especially if they want to um, strengthen their finances? Because you said, I think, was this Zamfara just started paying about 30,000 naira. Not every state is as rich as Lagos states, right, who can afford um, easily to pay this amount. The states that are not really getting as much money, what should they do? What policies? How can they just strengthen their finances to ensure that they are able to pay this amount as the minimum wage? Well, I believe Lagos is not just start from the blue moon. I remember, I think, uh, during the tenure of the present president and the governor of Lagos State, I think Lagos also faces the... Uh, these issues of not being able to pay a lot of money. And, and uh, one of the things he did then was to reduce burden on the state by returning some schools to the original owners, mm. which presently pays. Because, you know, when those schools take, maybe the school has about 100, the state has about 100 schools and about 50 are returned to the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the owners, the religious bodies that came from the beginning. You know, that takes off a lot of burden from the state coffers. Then I think uh, ask, uh, uh, asking the government how they can make money is just about running around, rigmaroling around the same bottle. Because one, they are making a lot of money. I think the only issue they have is how they spend this money. They, it is absurd to see state government budget so much for less than 1% of the population in terms of government house. Government budgeting for cars. Every for four years, when you know we don't have money, and you are bringing in cars for all the traditional revelers, for the legislators, for a lot of people, and we don't have money. God, you know, so I think they just need to rethink the wasteful spending. It's not about making money now. I, I doubt if there's any state that cannot afford 100,000 million. But the truth of the matter is that there is low sidedness in their spending, in the way they budget, and in the way they go about their implementation. I don't know. I'm just worried that um, the state governments are the ones that we're talking about, and now we have local government autonomy. I do hope that when the state government agrees that they are going to pay a certain amount of money, the local governments with the budget that, or with the allocations that they will be getting, they can also be paying these monies. And I also am um, just worried about Lagos State. I don't know how they're going to be doing it because the allocations that will be coming to the local government will be to the recognized local governments, not the LCDAs. So mm -hmm. if the local government will really be autonomous, what will happen to the LCDAs? Because uh, they are not recognized by government and any autonomous local government should not share their funds with uh, yes. another LCDA mm -hmm. uh, that was cut out of it because that was the practice in Lagos State. So I don't know how this will work. Well, uh, th thank you so much. Um, Lagos, to me, is, uh, has shown that it, it has not been serious with the creation of the LCDA because with funds Lagos State have, I believe that whatever coming from 20 recognized uh, recognize else, uh, local government. Lagos State should do the same amount from Lagos Copper to 37. Because to me, that's the only way those ones can stay. Because the main reason for creating them is for development in the first place. Because those local governments are actually very big. I'm in Lagos, I belong to an LCDA. Because the local government I belong to is very, very large, very big. And the only thing Lagos can do with all the money Lagos has is that if one billion goes to the 20, the Lagos will ensure under one billion to the 37. It's as simple as ABC. If Lagos want that development to, uh, as they, for the reason why they created the SCDA, they should stop this, stopping them with fund. If one billion comes to Kurudu, for example, and is shared into five, then what is the development? How will they meet up with this minimum wage? But the truth of the matter is that I know Lagos will get it right if they want to, if they see the people to tell them the truth. So now for the LCDs, Lagos will ensure that the same amount that comes from the FAC is allocated and given and paid. I think the Lagos State House of Assembly should enact that as a law. Otherwise, right, they have to scrap it. Okay. Mm. Thank All you. Right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's been a pleasure having you on our show um, and just sharing your valuable contribution. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you for having me and uh, have a pleasant day. You too, sir. Sure. All right, so we're speaking with Ola Dapo S. Moses, is the former national president, Pitek San. And we've just been looking at the deadline that the NLC has set 
for the new minimum wage, which is December 1. This is what we have to wrap it up on the show this morning. Thank you so much for having a breakfast with us. My name is Rume Paulson. And I am Nyamgul Agaji. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful day. Good morning.